According to the U.S. Forest Service, about 7 million acres of land is torched in wildfires each year, which would be like destroying a city the size of Manhattan 480 times. And the cost of damage for a single wildfire can easily reach $2 billion. And four out of five of those blazes are started by people. Luckily, there's not a lot of wildfires that break out each year. The U.S. averages 100,000 wildfires a year. So, how do you destroy one of nature's most destructive forces? Simple. Hundreds of highly trained firefighters, helicopters, air tankers, bulldozers, hot shots, drip torches, chemical warfare, and smoke jumpers. That's right, smoke jumpers. Take that, Michael Bay. This is how it's destroyed. This recording will self It's crazy to think a single spark can cause this. But what makes fire annihilation so devastating? Speed. In 1871, a blaze called the Thumb Fire broke out in Michigan. The Thumb Fire burned up more than 1 million acres of land in less than 24 hours. The scorched land still exists today and is now called Detroit. The fire triangle is heat, oxygen, and fuel. And for a fire to burn, it needs all three of these elements. And when it comes to destroying fire, every single method deals with eliminating one of these. The air we breathe is about 21% oxygen, but all fire needs to burn is 16%. When the heat rises, the potential for wildfire skyrockets. But starting a fire is easy. Destroying one is a different story. And there's lots of ways to destroy a wildfire. It takes a real hard ass to throw dynamite at a blazing wildfire. Professor Graham Doy is one such hard ass. In 2014, Dr. Doig began exploring if large explosives could put out brush fires. His theory was that shock waves from controlled explosions would knock a flame out, similar to blowing out a candle. And it works, but why? When it comes to camping, we all know if you want to make a fire bigger, you blow on the embers. This increases the amount of oxygen a fire is receiving, making the fire bigger. So why doesn't blowing oxygen on a candle blow up your face? The answer? Fuel. Blowing on a candle creates a burst of energy strong enough to knock a flame from its fuel source. That's why the shockwaves from a dynamite explosion can knock out a larger fire. But the shockwaves needed to knock out a wildfire, that'd be enough energy to knock out a chunk of the planet. That's where skilled people who fight fire with fire come in. Hot shots are the flaming front line of wildfire fighting, literally. These wildland firefighters wield flame torches to start controlled fires that eat up fuel in a wildfire's path. While destroying land to keep a wildfire from destroying land sounds counterintuitive, these strategic burns are a critical step to starve fuel-hungry wildfires. Here's a Game of Thrones-worthy solution. Build a moat, yo. Using bulldozers, earth movers, and good old-fashioned shovels, firefighters clear a ring around the fire called a fire break, getting rid of all the fuel in the fire's path. With nothing left to consume, the wildfire can't spread. That is until a huge gust of wind blows the fire over the break. Ugh, wildfires suck! But we ain't done. Here comes crap from the sky. You ever see a red colored pottery cloud pouring out of the backside of an air tanker? It's most likely a slurry made of water and fertilizer. So it really is crap from the sky. Even though water and fertilizer are their weapons, don't be fooled, aerial firefighters are elite heroes with highly specialized skills. These brave pilots fly at low altitudes in low visibility through terrifying conditions. It's like combining the skills of a stunt pilot, the nerves of a fighter pilot, and hundreds of hours of flying experience and ground school. Pilots often have to fly 60 feet off the ground and hit their targets with pinpoint accuracy, moving about 140 miles per hour. That's a direct hit. And a single aircraft making countless trips fighting a wildfire can drop hundreds of thousands of gallons of water. All for the primary goal of reducing fire's heat and intensity. Aerial firefighters are just one part of the aerial attack on wildfires. There are people, highly skilled, highly trained, and brave as hell, that jump out of airplanes into the heart of the battle. One of the most extreme aerial firefighting positions is smoke jumping. And with less than 500 smoke jumpers in the entire United States, it's rarefied air. They're deployed in dangerous, combustible, and hard to reach areas to battle fires at the source and keep them from spreading. 
and most of the wildfires they put out, you've never heard of. Because these extreme first-line aerial firefighters destroy fires before they become disasters. If you've been keeping up, you already know that destroying a wildfire almost always comes down to destroying its fuel source and heat. But since wildfires can commonly destroy hundreds of thousands of acres of land while reaching temperatures over 2,000 degrees, a fire's destruction comes down to the skill, bravery, and dedication of hundreds of wildland firefighters who take to the air to dampen a fire's heat and intensity so ground crews can take away a fire's fuel source and battle the flames head on. So the bottom line, it's not a single science, chemical, or technique that takes down massive wildfires. It's the combination of numerous earth sciences, high-risk skills, and heroic people coming together that destroys wildfires. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see how to destroy other random things, click the box on the left. Or click the box on the right to check out some other awesome AWME shows. And don't forget to subscribe.